Generally, we don't draw it with the arrow. In fact, we don't at all, but for some reason they did on that. So a single pole switch is just a normal switch in your house where you turn on the light and you turn off the light. Then you have an S3, which is a three-way switch. And that's where you'd find it between uh, the stairs, at the bottom of the stairs and the top of the stairs. You got a switch that can turn on off the lights from either location, or you got a hallway, or you got a room that has more than one entrance to it. That's where the three-way is. And then you have, that's the symbol for a four-way switch. And a four-way switch is just a switch that goes between two three-ways, and it gives you multiple switching locations. For lights, that's just considered a recess light, ceiling mount fixture, or a wall mount. Um, later on, we're going to uh, go over uh, blueprint reading. Um, so this would be like a wall sconce, either like the lights on the side of your garage, or maybe in your living room you have wall lights. This would be a light in the ceiling that is flush. This would be a light that you actually mount to a box like a chandelier or any other type of light. That's a single receptacle, a duplex, and a half switch. You're not gonna see those in that one. The one thing you do see though is this symbol. That's a resistor. That's the symbol of a resistor. And without having resistance in a circuit, you have um, a short circuit. So you have to have some type of resistance in the circuit. So what you were showing me, Sam, was a single pole switch with a battery. And the battery is a symbol like this. What's a resistor? Like you said also, it's a light. Well, they're just showing a resistor as being the load, okay? Yeah. So we have resistors, for example, that we put into circuits to get a certain amount of current or voltage we want. Um, this is the symbol of a battery and that's the symbol of a resistor. But every circuit has to have some type of a load because yeah. there's, uh, there's three things you need for a circuit minimum. You need a source, which is your battery. You need a path for current, which is your wire. And you need a load. So for example, the resistor or a light bulb or a motor or anything like that. Right. Those are the three minimum things you need for an electrical circuit. There are two others that make it a good circuit and that is you have to have protection, which would be a circuit breaker, which is, let me go back. This is a symbol of a circuit breaker and control, which would be the switch. But if I have conductors, so if I have wire, I have a battery and I have a light bulb, I could I could take, for example, let's say I have a, a 12 volt light bulb. I could put one end on the uh, positive of my battery, one end of the wire on my negative of the battery, touch those both to the light bulb and the light bulb will work and I have a, a circuit. Is it a good circuit? No, because I don't have any protection. I need a circuit breaker so I don't get an overload and I don't have any control. So I need a switch, something to control it. Did that answer your question? It definitely helps having that explanation.